Hello makers and welcome back to another studio vlog. If you are new here, welcome. I'm Joanna and this is Stitching the High Notes where each week I share what I am making, whether it be knitting, sewing, cross stitching, embroidery, crochet, whatever crafty rabbit hole I may be going down, as well as a look behind the scenes of my creative small business where I make project bags for makers like you. And my hope is always to encourage you to nourish your own creativity and to stitch joy or the high notes into your everyday life. How are you doing? How was your week? My week was pretty good. It was actually quite lovely. I had a slower pace as you might be able to hear if you are a longtime viewer or have been watching for a while. Last week I had a cold, my first head cold in I want to say over two years and it was pretty gnarly and grateful it wasn't anything worse than that but yeah I'm still I got a little bit of lingering effects but I'm almost a hundred percent so I'm really really grateful but I've gotten a lot of making done to share with you today some finished makes a new cast on some shop news and a whole bunch of other stuff so grab a refreshing or cozy beverage of your choice your knitting or stitching and let's chat this week I have just been in recovery mode a little bit after a big push to get a big shop update done and then also at this time last week I had just sent out my biggest yet collaboration with an indie uh, yarn dyer, Nancy of Trilogy Yarns. I had just sent out that order to her. It was essentially like a wholesale order and I had 105 uh, drawstring bags for our practical magic Halloween advent boxes which will be going out this week. She'll be sending them out this week. Um, they have arrived safe and sound. Phew. <laughs> and so it was a good, it was a big milestone for my shop and for stitching the high notes and yeah so this week I really, um, once the package arrived I kind of had a big sigh of relief and I really got to focusing for the the rest of this week and this weekend, I'm in the height of it right now, this weekend, it's Saturday, making for myself my personal makes, if you will, because after this weekend, I my main focus is gonna be on preparing for the next shop update, which I'll chat about here a little bit later. And then October is gonna be holiday box extravaganza and getting ready for the holiday season. So I've been really, really taking time to just piddle around and make whatever my heart desires today. So I have, let's start, let's just jump into the knitting that I've been doing. I've got a finished pair of socks, y'all. What, what? <laughs> These are just an easy peasy vanilla sock toe up. I use kind of my own recipe, if you will. I just do a toe that is part of the CC's Vanilla Cappuccino Sock. All the links to everything will be down below in the show notes. I do a shadow wrap heel, which is my go-to short row heel. Uh, and then I do a two by two rib i alternate between a one by one twisted rib and a two by two uh and yeah these are made out of yarn for my stash by coloring book yarns um in the colorway hey girl and i love them i'm keeping them for myself usually i make socks for my mom but I love this colorway, so I'm keeping them for myself. Uh, and yeah, they're self-striping. Uh, the Shadow Wrap heel really works well with the self-striping yarn. It just works perfectly. It does like two of the colors. And I love them. It's so lovely. But I really wanted to keep the fun going. So I cast on a new pair of vanilla socks. And I went into my stash... Uh, and really wanted something autumnal because the equinox is this week in a few days and I knew I would be probably knitting on them into October a little bit 
Um, I wanted to do the Shadow Wrap Peel. Denise has provided instructions or has just kind of given guidelines of doing the Shadow Wrap Peel as an afterthought heel. Uh, and that really intrigued me. So I'm going to do that with a contrasting color. And I decided on, I, I found so many beautiful yarns in my stash and I have ideas percolating of other things that I want to make with them. But I decided for these pa this pair of socks, I'm going to do Beehive Yarns. And I believe that this was a set that was a kind gift. And I've adored this yarn from afar. It's a UK dyer. Uh, so I'm so excited to be casting it on. Uh, it is on the Audrey base. Uh, so it's 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. It's 100 grams total uh, between the main skein and the mini skein, I believe. Uh, or no, actually, the mini skein might be extra. So uh, and it's 465 yards, 425 meters. The, the colorways are hoggle and foxtails. So I'm assuming that this contrasting color is foxtails. Just absolutely stunning, gorgeous, gorgeous color. Of course, all of the pumpkin autumnal vibes with this colorway. And then here is the main color, which is just, oh absolutely beautiful speckled gorgeousness I love this base too it's nice and thin but I know it's gonna plump up when it is blocked or as it's worn and here I'll show it on the back without the progress keeper so you can see it all knit up in its glory just all of the beautiful colors the kind of deep rich red kind of maroon color and rusty color and yellow just absolutely beautiful I have it, uh, I had to use my pumpkin spice latte progress keeper that I got at Rhinebeck, I want to say 2017 is when I went. It's by Sucre Sucre Miniatures and it was a special progress keeper that was part of the Needles Up event, I believe. And I'm using my 2.25 millimeter needles. Chow Goos are my go-to and I'm doing Magic Loop. I might switch over to my nine inch circulars that are also Chow Goo as well, same needle size of course, but uh, we shall see. I, I have to be mindful of the amount of sewing coming down the pike here and need to reserve it for my hands. And it's just so easy to use this uh, size needle on Magic Loop for me to just watch TV and zone out, which is why I'm Probably gonna have a pair of vanilla socks going the remainder of life, <laughs> but definitely through the next three months, the last three months of the year. So yeah, I love it. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to try out the Afterthought heel uh, because this, I'm gonna do it so that, and of course I'll share the process when I get to that point, um, but I'm gonna do it so that I put it on waist yarn I believe that's what I do. I haven't done an afterthought heel yet. Um, I'm going to put on waist yarn and then continue on so then I don't have to have the anxiety of snipping it, <laughs> of cutting it. Although I know once you do it, you're, you get over it, but it's kind of like steaking essentially. But, um, but I will need to do that because I still have a pair of socks by uh, in yarn by the Cozy Knitter from also Rhinebeck that I cast on when I was at Rhinebeck that are holiday themed, they're Christmas themed. Um, so I really need to do the afterthought heel for that so it can have some instant Christmas socks. So I'm really excited to try out this heel as an afterthought and see if I really like it, like the process of it, um, which is really the most important thing along, you know, of course fit and everything. But I think that if this process works out, really well then it's going to be it's not really like a hindrance to stop and do a heel especially doing a short row heel which is besides the fit a lot of times why I do like a fish lips kiss heel um because it's quick and it's easier for me um but I think that this would be really lovely because then I could just knit 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 and keep going and then do the afterthought after it's an afterthought so 
that is my new cast on and then I cast on yesterday and finished this morning this wee little acorn so this is part of the Fall Harvest Charm Set by Susan B. Anderson, and I'm using a kit by her yarn company, Barrett Wool. I'm just making my way through the, uh, making my way, <laughs> making my way through all of the little various charms that are part of the set. Um, so I have the, one of the leaves already made, and then my first thing that I made was a little pumpkin which is really lovely. So now I have like a little acorn and it was really easy and easy to do. And you guys, I finally got a set of new DPNs that made the process so much better. Let me grab them. I decided to keep with Chow Goose because I really love their needles. They're perfect weight and I love um, kind of the brush or kind of the finish of their needles. And so I got a set of size six, US uh, size six, or sorry, US three. I know I was like, that isn't right. US three, 3.25 millimeter, and they're six inches long. The ones that I had been using before were seven inches long and Susan Bates and that extra inch was just like too much for me. I'm not used to using double pointed needles or DPNs. Um, they're still not my preferred <laughs> way of doing it, but I feel I felt with the seven inches that I felt like um, Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> it was kind of crazy, but these are the perfect size. The points of the needles are fantastic. They're not too pointy. Um, and not too dull. Um, I really, really, really enjoy these. I was thinking maybe I would get carbons uh, because I have, that's my interchangeable set that I've had since I started knitting essentially. Um, but I just wanted just straight up metal needles. Um, so yeah, I really recommend these. I really, really enjoy them. I thought about investing in some signature needles, which are pretty pricey, but I do love those needles. I have one, uh, I have one needle with interchangeable cables. I think it's a size six, US size six needle, and I love it. I love when I get to use it, but I thought I'm not gonna use DPNs that often, so I'm gonna use my kind of main go-to needle, Chalku, and I'm really glad that I that I did it. So now I, I think today I'm gonna cast on yet another leaf. Maybe I'll tackle the pine cone, which I've heard is the fiddliest thing. We shall see, but um, I can probably, definitely after seeing how little yarn this little acorn took, I could probably make like 10 sets out of all of the yarn. <laughs> I might be exaggerating, but we'll see. Uh, out of all the yarn that came in the kit, which I learned uh, have been restocked. I don't know if they're sold out at the point that you're watching this, but um, they've been restocked and there's a new kit and pattern just for little itty bitty pumpkins as well. So love Susan B, Queen B. Another thing that I did this weekend is that I finally blocked my Keen Wonder tank top pieces. <laughs> it's taken a while. I have many thoughts on <laughs> this process. So I had been having to put it uh, to the back burner for a variety of reasons. Um, it's a garment that I cast on. I can't even remember when I cast it on. I'll put it up here on the screen. Of course, links are down below to my project page over on Ravelry. Uh, this is my second garment of the year. I'd hope to make more. And I will pause here to say that as I was blocking this, I was realizing Oh, where to begin all of the realizations that I had as I was blocking this but uh, you know put, I soaked it in water and was pinning it and everything the whole process is that I kind of regret casting this on because I think I'm not it's not going to be a stable piece of my wardrobe never say never maybe I will be proven wrong as the years go on but I wish now that I had cast on the several um, patterns in my queue that are knitted 
t-shirts essentially knitted tees or short sleeve sweaters because I think I would wear those more often and actually I think I would have made them a lot quicker the process would have been better um you know so you don't know until you kind of start going into the pattern you start making the thing but the process of making this particular pattern has not been as enjoyable or relaxing which at the end of the day is what you're going for when you're knitting and doing kind of your personal making especially it's highlighted more if you make for a living too a big chunk of my income comes from stitching the high notes so um i wish i i the the end product wooed me and it has been a lesson of i really need to really take stock of the pattern and take a look at the pattern before I really dive in and jump in on something. I think I used to be more of a product knitter um, before and more adventurous. And I think since having my shop and having it become more a, a bigger part of my life um, and sewing for the shop, um, as well as other elements of my life coming into a higher priority and taking up more time that knitting for me it really the focus and the the higher value for me is on process and so yeah I think I am gonna have to be kind of pushing myself here to finish this tank top because there's still a lot to do it blocked out well unfortunately it looks like it's it's drying okay uh, but as I was blocking it or soaking it rather it started to uh, bleed color in the water and there were parts of the I think it just wasn't getting fully wet in certain parts of it there were there was a lot of there were a lot of bubbles as I was putting it into it so a lot of air was coming out of it too which I think might be because of the makeup of the base of the yarn base but um, it started to kind of show it, I thought it was going to be kind of tie dyeing a little bit for lack of a better way of putting it um that it was not it was bleeding uh color and splotches of the garment of the pieces and so it was like that is what kind of kicked me in high gear of realizing like yeah i have been putting this off because obviously other things have been of higher priority that i've needed to do for the shop or focus on other things but in terms of finishing this garment but I think also I knew through doing the process, it hasn't been an easy pattern to make that I just knew with how much was going to be left after blocking it um, that I wasn't going to enjoy it and I've been wanting to do other things. So I'm eager to finish it up now once it's dry. So hopefully it's dry tomorrow, you know. Hopefully it's dry tomorrow. You could tell I my heart's just not in this garment anymore. But uh, I need to seam up the sides and the shoulders. Um, that's another thing I noticed is that I think one of the racer back tops of the neck over here, I didn't knit as long as the other side. Um, but I'm going to go take a look at it again because it might just be how I laid it out um, on the mat. Fingers crossed. But um, I have to seam it up and then I have to cast on around the armholes and the neck and do a f several rows of garter edging and then it should be finished. And of course, weave in all the ends and all that stuff. So it's not a matter of just like weaving in ends at this point. It's it, or just a simple seaming up. Um, there's still quite a lot to do on it. So let me know if you've experienced this. I don't know if this, I've, if I've experienced this before or it's been quite some time since I've had this where I've gotten to the finish line and I've realized like, I feel like I kind of wasted my precious <laughs> making time making this garment and I really wish that I had made something else. I'm sure, especially if you're a long time viewer, I've probably, you probably are like, yeah, Joanna, you did this like three years ago, <laughs> but, but it's been a while since I've done this. And I think because my making time is my knitting time specifically is so precious now. Um, I just, I really need to be that much more mindful. So I think I have one more sweater in me for the year. And I really want to do the forest or into the woods 
Sweater by Melody Hoffman. I started out the year with a Melody Hoffman and it is my favorite sweater I've ever made. It is my go-to sweater. I'm really hoping that it gets chilly here in October so I can start wearing it. We're still, you know, our typical Bay Area. It's now like warm during the days here um, where it hasn't been before. So um, yeah, I want to kind of finish the year with a, a into the woods sweater. I think it'll be really lovely, very winter. It'll probably something I'll probably keep making into the new year and finish it up then. We'll see. Um, but I even for that, I'm gonna take a look at the really look at the pattern and see is this something that I truly can make and will enjoy making and understanding and putting the puzzle pieces together for this garment um, as I am doing so many other things at the end of this year. So yeah, lesson learned. Yeah, so, but yeah, I wanna finish this tank top, put it on, go outside, take a picture, probably put it away until next season and then I'll like truly enjoy the tank top hopefully next season. I also wanted to pause here and say thank you all so much for your lovely messages uh, for my birthday, which was actually yesterday on Friday. Um, just so, so grateful for you all and for all your kind and heartwarming messages. Again, thank you. So grateful for you all. Um, and yeah, it's been a really lovely, relaxing couple of days that I've had and I'm looking forward to another one tomorrow. I'm going to try to go to the farmer's market and kind of get back into some really healthy cooking. I haven't been eating horribly as of late, but I just feel like I haven't been eating as many fresh uh, produce uh, as much fresh produce as I really want to be eating kind of thinking back to um, April of last year when I was daily vlogging in like what was that April May June or something that I daily vlogged um, and I was cooking so much granted I was in like full lockdown like everybody so I kind of had to but it was really wonderful and a real source of energy. So now that fall season is here, I feel like it's a lot easier for me to kind of cook during the fall, given all my dietary restrictions and stuff for whatever reason. So I'm really looking forward to getting into that and to having more here on the studio vlogs of things to make. We're heading into a real cozy season, so I'm really excited to try out some new recipes. So I'm going to go to the farmer's market tomorrow. I'm going to do some errands and go to the zero waste or low waste store and fill up on a few things. But yeah, kind of do some self-care before... Starting next week, it's going to, as I mentioned earlier, going to be full shop update time. I have three bag collections coming on October 1st. That will be the next shop update. I'm so excited. They're going to be fall and Halloween themed. And oh, I have stitch markers that are starting to arrive as well that will also be added to the shop. So I can't wait to share those with you and give you a sneak peek next week on next week's vlog. But this week we'll be cutting all of the various pieces. And since I'm doing three collections, um, hopefully there'll be quite a bit in the uh, shop. Y'all surprised me last time and <laughs> it sold out, but hopefully there'll be uh, a lot in the shop this coming October 1st. Um, if I have some time, I'm gonna re do a really super small restock with a limited amount of fabric that I have left from the last update of the Summer Magic and late uh, Summer Fireflies bags. Um, and then I still have just a handful, like maybe six bags or so, of um, last year's fall bag, some of the collections, not all of them. So I'm gonna see if I can plop those. I'm trying to, you know, I'm making more room as things are coming in for the holiday boxes that I'm putting together for you all, the pre-orders that are gonna be going out the first week of November. So I need to make space. <laughs> I need more space. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to really getting into sewing and sewing my my little brain's out. I'm really excited. I just, I think I say it every, every vlog now, but I love my new sewing machine. It is working out so beautifully and I'm just, it's making 
think so much easier and so much more of a joy to do. It's just night and day compared to my little small machine that I had before. So really highly re recommend Juki for sure. But yeah, October 1st, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific um, and more to come about that next week. Also, almost forgot to mention this, that I have restocked some of the favorite stitch markers. There are more ladybug stitch markers now in the shop, as well as the honeycomb stitch markers. And there's still a handful of bags in Christmas fabrics, and I think there's like one summer magic needlework bag still in the shop as well. But yeah, more to come. Oh, and some of... Uh, I think like maybe three or four of y'all reached out the last couple weeks asking if I was going to have uh, pins again because I have been sold out of the Stitching the High Notes logo pin for some time. And the answer is yes. I don't have the timing yet. It depends on when I can get them. But I'm doing a little bit of a redesign, not a big one, um, as well as some other stuff. So yeah, they're in the works and they'll be in there at some point this year. And I think that's going to do it for this week's vlog. A bit of a shorter one, seemingly. And then I always start editing and it's not quite as short as I think. But I it's still my birthday weekend. So I want to get back to settling in and watching some TV and knitting and just kind of puttering around and doing things. So I'm going to get back to that and also eating chocolate chip cookies that I made uh, yesterday for myself and they're so delicious so I hope that you all are doing well that your makes are going well let us know what you are making down below and I will see you all next week bye